The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no haversack, no coppers for their purses. They were to wear sandals, but he added, do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, if you enter a house anywhere, Stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you, and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set off to preach repentance. And they cast out many devils, and anointed many sick people with oil, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the reading today, first reading from the book of the prophet Amos, and last week's gospel reading make it very clear to us that when you're working for the Lord, you need a very thick skin. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, says to Amos, go away, sir. Get back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, do your prophesying there. Or, in Trinidadian English, gone. <laughs> Mash. The person who wishes to spread the message of the gospel in season and out of season, a message which does not always find welcome in the hearts of men and women needs to be able to have a thick skin, to give as good as they get. And it always reminds me of this story I love to tell about these men who sat behind these two nuns at this uh, football match. And they started making rude remarks about the sisters and about uh, Catholicism there, you know? And the first guy says to the other guy in a loud voice for the nuns to hear, I think I am going to move to um, Calcutta. There are only a hundred Catholics there. And the other guy says, no, 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 no. I am going to move to Beijing. There are only 20 Catholics there. And the nun, of course, is looking around. And the third guy, well, there was a third guy with them. He says, no, 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 no. I'm going to move to Moscow. There are only 10 Catholics there. And by this time, the senior nun has had enough. She turns around. She says, why don't the three of you all go to hell? There are no Catholics there. Um, The, the episode in today's gospel reading from Mark, however, takes up from last week's gospel where Jesus experiences rejection at the hand of his town people. And um, rather than, what does he do? He has a thick skin. So rather than give in to despair or to get vexed, he decides to take his message on the road in a very big way. And to do this, he sends his 12 disciples or his 12 apostles out to spread his message. And the word 
in English, apostles, comes from the Greek apostolos, which means delegate or one who is sent out. When St. Mark wrote this gospel story around the year 70 AD, it was taken as a message to the early church about the need to move quickly, to move with a sense of urgency, and to place themselves absolutely in God's care. Jesus says to them, take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no haversack, no coppers for your purses. What about us in the year 2015? I want to propose to all of us that this gospel reading from Mark retains a certain relevance for us, and I'm going to explain a little bit about what I mean. There is, in the times in which we live, the natural tendency to believe that uh, the church can only get her message across by adopting the most modern methods of communication, by taking a page out of the best marketing strategies available from the world of business. And I would like to acknowledge that this is a partial truth. It's wonderful to be on Facebook. It's wonderful to be on Twitter. I have a Facebook page myself. But the gospel message has its own power. Pope Benedict XVI, our last pope, once famously said, it is not by proselytizing that the church grows, but by attraction. And the decision to become a Christian is not based on a lofty idea, on following a set of laws. The decision to become a Christian, as it was in the time of Paul, as it was in the time of St. Francis, as it was down through the ages, is always based on an encounter with a person. And encountering this person makes all the difference. so that there is an inherent attractiveness about the gospel message. This is why that phrase, take nothing for the journey, is such a powerful one for me. Take nothing for the journey, because we already have what we need for the journey, and the thing if we call it a thing, that we need for the journey is nothing else but the Christian story. My story, your story, our story. What we have, what we need to proclaim the word of God is nothing less than our encounter with the living God. What we have for the journey, or what we need, is nothing less than our encounter 
with Jesus Christ who, as our Protestant sisters and brothers said, becomes our personal Lord and Savior. The fundamental method of evangelizing in the church has not changed in all this time. Proclaim to those around the marvels of the Lord. Say to your neighbors in the office, in the gym, in the street, in the supermarket, this is what Jesus has done for me. The formula hasn't changed. We can put it on Twitter. We can put it on Facebook. It's the same formula. Always and everywhere, in season and out of season, we proclaim the marvelous love of God. Pope Francis, in his great apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, reminds us that our encounter with God's love blossoms into a friendship. A friendship which transforms us. And it draws us, as he says, out of our narrowness and our self-absorption. When we are drawn out of our narrow concern, we come to know what the Christian tradition has always known, that life grows by being given away. It's the only treasure we have. The more we give it away, the more it grows inside of us. The Holy Father spoke at length in Evangelii Gaudium about the entire church becoming a missionary body. Now, I want to say that one of the fundamental problems with Catholics and this whole notion of evangelization, even the new evangelization, which we are always talking about, is that for many of us, it has a Protestant ring. It's not for those people going out on the streets, ringing bell like the Baptists and them, you know. For many Catholics, they see the church as a wonderful place in which to grow their children. It's a great place to go up, lovely people upstanding, but looking at the church in this manner makes the church out into a kind of social club. And what the popes have been saying to us since the time of the great John Paul II, right down to our own Pope Francis, is that the church is much, much more than a social club. It is a body of people seeking constantly to expand its membership. Always and everywhere, you and I have to be looking for newer and better opportunities to spread that gospel message. He says, interestingly, becoming an evangelizer, the church becoming an evangelizing community doesn't mean us rushing blindly out the door to talk to people on Frederick Street necessarily. It may be something as simple as sitting down, slowing down, and listening to the stories of the people around us. And in our proclamation of the gospel, we have to proclaim the good news. And we need to distinguish the essence, that which is most important in the gospel, the offer of God's love from some aspect of the church's moral teaching. He 
sacred scripture expresses the essence of the gospel message in so many different ways. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that those who believe in him may not perish but may have everlasting life. Every single human being because you are a human being stands before the offer of grace proclaiming the gospel for our time doesn't simply mean saying well you know I know God here is God I am bringing him to you no the proclamation of the gospel involves the joyful announcement that God is not far from any one of us. He is with you. He is in you. You just have to take him by the hand. Accept the offer of grace before which every single human being stands. The Holy Father reminds us, sisters and brothers, that the friendship with God brings with it the peace which comes from the forgiveness of sin. And he expresses it in this very beautiful way. He says, Everyone needs to be touched by the comfort and attraction of God's saving love. Isn't that nice? Everyone needs to be touched by the comfort and the attraction of God's saving love, which is mysteriously at work in each person and beyond their faults and failings. I didn't write that. Pope Francis wrote that. He has more authority than me. The Holy Father is saying, say to others that God's saving love is already at work in you. Will you cooperate with that love? Thus it is, my dear sisters and brothers, that we have a responsibility as Catholics to present the church as a door that is open to men and women everywhere. As the Holy Father wrote, the church is not a toll house. It is nothing less than the house of the Father where there is room for everyone whatever their problems. It is the house of joy. It is the place of conversion. It is a place where the banquet is spread to which God invites all people. But that whole process of inviting people to, to, to come and share this life with us has to begin with something as simple as telling someone that you know what Jesus has done for you. Can I see by a show of hands? But let's take a poll. This is the time for polls, eh? <laughs> Can I see, but let's take a poll. How many of you last week, in the last seven days, have testified? In some way or the other. Told somebody else. Hmm. Okay. Sister Rhonda, we have a lot of work cut out for you here. Eh? <laughs> I want to issue that challenge again. And I've done this in the past, and I will do it again. And you there watching us on television um, can take up this challenge with us. I am missing this challenge to you and to me, that before the passage of seven days, before the end of this week, by next week Sunday, every person in this room would have told one other human being what God has done for them. That's where it begins. 
We don't have to go off to distant lands to tell people what God has done for us. Charity begins at home, amen? amen. Yes. Let's begin by the people that we actually know. Say one good thing that God has done for us. And let me end by adding something that I've also said before. Um, if Jesus is good news, if being a Catholic is good news, then our bodies, our behavior, and our faces should advertise it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.